What's with loading? Loading occurs when a game needs to compute and generate an action. Many games do this in different ways. Typically, how a game loads depends on how intensive the game itself is. For example, Spyro the Dragon takes a much longer time to load than Wild Arms because the former is more graphically intense, despite them both being on the same console. Loading can also take longer depending on hardware. For example, someone with a better computer might be able to run some games with faster loading times. Solid state drives can also load games faster than disk-based systems. This is why the Nintendo 64 loads games faster than the PlayStation 1. Additionally, the new Nintendo 3DS has shorter load times than the previous 3DS. Similarly, games re-released on later consoles will often load quicker. For example, The Last of Us will load faster on a PlayStation 4 than a PlayStation 3. A lot of people consider loading to be a huge nuisance. After all, they just want to play the game. Oftentimes, this can't be avoided, however. Possibly the least annoying type of loading occurs through what is known as pop-in. Most common in 3D open world games, pop-in occurs when the game chooses to load only in a radius around the player. After all, there is no need for the game to recognize objects too far for the player to interact. This is present in games like Minecraft, Grand Theft Auto, L.A. Noir, and many more. As you can see, items only appear when the player becomes close enough for them to matter for the gameplay, essentially popping in to the field of view of the player. An interesting case occurs for Grand Theft Auto Vice City and Grand Theft Auto 3. The games were optimized to only load what's on screen, and as a result, turning the camera around while driving ensures that no other cars will spawn in front of you, meaning you can drive freely. Later installments, like Grand Theft Auto V, however, don't allow you to move the camera around far enough to make this happen. Another type of loading is the notorious loading screens. These will display to instruct the player when the game is loading. Some games, like Portal and Half-Life 2, simply pause the screen on the last image and load the next location. This is only done in locations for which the player cannot backtrack, so levels must be designed so that this is plausible. More common is the pre-designated screen for loading, in which the game transitions to a new screen altogether to load. These can be as simple as a plain black screen, a picture of the game's logo, sometimes a progress bar. Sometimes they're more complex, with means of trying to distract or entertain the player. Some games show any combination of pictures, lore, and even tips relevant to the game. Probably the coolest loading screens, however, are the interactive ones. In addition to giving lore, the loading screen of Skyrim lets the player move a rendered 3D model. Crash Tag Team Racing lets the player make cheeky, flatulent sound effects. Some types of interactive loading screens, however, haven't always been an option for game designers. I invite you to the year 1995. Here at Namco, we're filing a patent that says only we can employ auxiliary games during our loading screen. The patent will end on November 27th, 2015. A lot of people are unfamiliar with this patent. Only 90s kids would remember it. But a lot of games use minigames during their loading screens. How do they get away with it? It hinges on one word, auxiliary. This means that Bandai's Dragon Ball Z Budokai series could use minigames like this, in which players spin the sticks as fast as they can, challenging themselves to make as many Cybermen spawn as they can. Meanwhile, games like Wonderful 101 get past this. In Wonderful 101, loading screens put the player in a room with boxes and enemies, letting them fight to pass the time. This gameplay is reminiscent of the main game, effectively classifying it as not auxiliary. Some games use what's called buffer loading. This occurs when the game is triggered to load by various events in a game's level. This can be seen in games like Pokemon and Metroid Prime. In recent Pokemon games, scattered about the map are buildings between cities and routes. Entering these buildings causes the game to load the upcoming route or city. Older Pokemon games wouldn't do this as frequently, as they were much lower maintenance, but with the more graphically intensive areas, the number of them spread around the world map is multiplied. In Metroid Prime, every door in the game requires you shoot it to open. Shooting the door causes the game to load the area behind it. Buffer loading is positively misleading to the player, as it disguises loading for what appears to the player as just more gameplay. Metroid Prime also relies heavily on cutscenes to mask its loading times. Between worlds, you must watch a short cutscene taking place on an elevator. The game is actually loading during this cutscene. This type of loading is also seen in Max Payne 3, where you cannot skip the cutscenes until the level is finished loading. Hiding the load from the player allows for the game to remain more engaging. Conversely, there are ways that loading can be heavily influential on how the player feels about the game, intentional or not. One example comes from Punishment. Sonic 06 is a notable example, sometimes forcing the player to wait through four loading screens just to retry a failed mission. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U also does this. The event mode doesn't give the player the option to retry, forcing them to load the event all over again if they want to try again. Dark Souls is one of the most well-known for its tendency to punish. This is a hard game, and the loading times take a while. Players have to adapt and become good at the game, or else they'll spend more time staring at loading screens than actually playing. Punishing the player for their losses can inspire them to try harder to not fail. It can also have the opposite effect, however, causing some players to give up. The idea of a punishing load doesn't seem too awful until you compare it to a game like Super Meat Boy, which has no load times between lives. 
If it did, most would agree that the game would be entirely unplayable. Sometimes a game loads for dramatic effect. This is that feeling you get when you get a new game and you're so excited to play it, but it's just taking so long to start loading. However, it can be hard to tell if it's deliberate or if the game is actually creating an unintentional dramatic pause as a result of taking time to load. In the Mega Man games, there's always a buffer load before each boss. In addition to serving as a buffer zone, this builds the player up for the boss battle ahead. This is also seen in the Super Smash Bros. games. After a timed match, there's a pause between the game ending and the victory screen. During that pause, the game is loading the victory screen. In a timed match, players who've lost track of who was vanquishing the other are forced to wait in anticipation to see the screen revealing who the victor was. Most effectively, these dramatic loads can exist to enhance the story of the game. Final Fantasy VII was released on multiple discs. The end of the first disc leaves the player shocked and curious to see what happens next. After inserting the second disc, the player must wait for the disc to load. In this way, anticipation is perpetuated by the loading time of the game. So what's the point? Loading is a staple to video games, and it always will be. Games loading typically depends on the power of the hardware. To some, loading can be a nuisance, but designers do the best they can to occupy a player's time while they wait. Buffer loading is a common practice to mask loading through the means of marginally impeded progress or cutscenes. Sometimes how a game loads influences greatly how the player feels about the game, whether that was intended by the designers or not. Because hey, just as time goes on, games will always need to load. And that's what's with loading. You should subscribe. That, that would be, that'd be really cool of you to do. If you like this video, consider giving it a like and commenting with an idea for the next episode. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter, the links are in the description. For more What's With Games, you can click the links right there to see some previous episodes.